kind of curious to see which one they decide to uh, to play, knowing that A Fly has almost almost exclusively gone yeah. uh, Game and Watch. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's a pretty simple choice because you have somebody who really does not do well against Game and Watch, and then somebody who has Game and Watch's worst matchup, which is Power. Uh, but <laughs> there's of course the comfort pick. There's the fun pick. You have a you know, 20 to 1 point lead, so it really doesn't matter. Um, but, gotta say, Paolo Game & Watch feels so good for Paolo, but, man, Game & Watch, that poor thing suffers. But we're actually going to be seeing the Sephiroth, uh, which is another excellent pick. You know, if anybody can really keep him at bay and at a distance, um, it would be, you know, it'd be the guy with the really long sword. Sephiroth, the new uh, character to the stream for uh, for Cookie, at least. So we'll have to see if this one plays out on Town and City. As uh, I, I think you're absolutely right. This is going to be tough for A-Fly to get in. That being said, he is off to an early lead here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, already putting on 65% onto the board. Able to get the multi-jab just to throw him off. An excellent catch on the jump. That did so, not look right. <laughs> that did not look like it should have happened that way at all. But you know what? Godspeed to A-Fly. He was able to get the stock. Um, able to get a bit of damage going. <sighs> that, that still has me just like a little bit shook. Um, I believe Game & Watch would actually be fully capable of bucketing the, uh, the side B. So as long as he gets enough space from Cookie to keep himself nice and safe, it might be an extremely viable option. Absolutely that. Up B on, on neutral there, and oh, that was, uh, <laughs> that is a dangerous move to throw out. The bucket, I feel like, is going to be, a, you know, something always in the back of Cookie's mind because of all of Sephiroth's projectiles. Yeah, oh, and I have to say, I love the way that A-Fly is committing offstage against Cookie, you know? A lot of characters, um, or the players of those characters at least, are not willing to commit that far offstage. Maybe instead going through those ledge traps, Cookie able to clean it up with a down smash nonetheless though. But look at that chase! Look at that positioning! A-Fly, so confident that Cookie was gonna go for another double jump there, was just able to up B preemptively and got that stock. That is just solid, solid, you know, textbook edge guarding. Absolutely, and uh, I mean, not afraid to go out there either on, uh, on a character that feels like they've got plenty of recovery options. Cookie finding himself at an early deficit here, but now A-Fly backed into a corner here at 100% is absolutely kill percent. I believe Game & Watch, one of the lightest characters in this game, and that down and smash is, is going to poke yeah. through. Dashing back into it. I love those empty hops from Cookie. Was able to bait those. Able to get the punish nonetheless. Tries to extend from that up B into the down air. Perhaps just lands a little bit quicker. Lands with the back air on Cookie's shield. That is a move that you have to tilt your shield for. And hold a little bit longer than you think. Because, wow, can it poke? And it still has an impact hitbox for some reason. 96% to 11 for A-Fly, and that forward are going to be able to connect. Ooh, the counter. I like that idea. Knowing Love that, that he... adaptation. Ooh, that forwarder, though, the bomb, going to be able to catch Cookie, and A-Fly earn another point back for Kinesis. I really like that idea to go for the uh, Scintilla. I was about to call it the Sicilian uh, for a second. I thought to myself, wait, that doesn't sound right. No, it goes for uh, <laughs> the Scintilla, right? That's, 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 that's what it's called, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but yeah, because like A-Fly has established that, you know, that's what he only wants to be doing offstage, trying to like catch a jump with his own up B. Um, but at the end of the day, A-Fly was just really, really solid with it. Um, he was able to secure a lot of those stocks. His quality pressure was so, so good. Uh, going into the next game, A-Fly is going to have to be a little bit more careful um, in mid-range because that is where he was losing almost all of his stocks. Uh, Cookie was just sort of waiting for him to press Chef, waiting for him to overcommit, um, and like baited out a lot of options just by empty hopping sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, A-Fly was... I mean, it was a solid game. I, I really appreciate A-Fly's ability to, to go off stage for those edge guards. And Cookie kind of caught on, you saw on that last stock with the counter, but just dropping that shield a second too late, uh, or a second too early, I should say, on that last stock and uh, losing his uh, final stock to that match. 
Still though, it did come down to the last stock and I feel like just, you know, one or two openings is really all Cookie needed to bring that game back to even. Yep, uh, at the end of the day, you know, just like really making sure that you're not losing your stocks as early off stage. Uh, Sephiroth has a lot of pressure just from up be alone. You know, he doesn't always have to book a double jump. Sometimes he can just drift a little bit and charge up B, and that can cause any opponent to back off. But from A fly, we are now going to be seeing the switch to uh, to Steve. How do you feel about this? Well, I did say almost exclusively game and watch right before almost, this yeah. match. So look at that. You gave yourself an opening. You gave yourself not a, a way character. Out. Not a character I expected to see, and. Uh, I, I actually have no idea how this match plays out. <laughs> um, this is an interesting one. Honestly, Steve likes to occupy and sit in the quarter a little bit. Um, Sephiroth does have the buttons to be able to pressure him from a pretty safe distance um, as well. Just going to be exploding that TNT immediately, just saying, hey, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to think about it. I'm just going to get it off my stage so we can go back to playing Smash. Pretty even so far in terms of percentage. And, uh, interestingly wow. enough, oh, I like that setup, the down air and the down smash. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's so, so scary because, you know, down air is an incredibly menacing move. It's fast, it gets kills. A fly rolls right into it, shields that down smash, and Cookie was able to find the shield break punish. Finds that kill in a very flashy manner, so explosive, uh, and brings the game back to even. That down smash of Sephiroth does so much shield pressure and the recognition uh, by Cookie to realize, hey, I can go for this and get that shield break. Good stuff to him. But again, right back to just about an even match here. Yeah, Cookie, that time going to be double jumping back on very, very unsafely. Not going to even be landing on a platform with anything. Resets the situation with Uppy. There it is. That's the whatever it's called, the, the, the double wing. Oh, uh, ooh, almost getting the up B into the up smash. Ah, uh, Cookie air dodge and still ended up landing back into it. Up B has such a low amount of landing lag and that hitbox just pops you up in the most convenient fashion. Ooh, I like the idea there to counter as well. Just kind of recognizing when E-Fly was gonna go in and that neutral be not gonna be able to connect. Good avoidance by A-Fly. Both of these characters seeing at kill percentage and the forward <laughs> smash gonna be able to take it. Forward smash does indeed take it. I like the way that A fly chose to get back on. Um, you know, my code is just like a move that unless you have a really good read on it, you just have to respect it more often than not. Steve lacks the out of shield options. Uh, also, that footstool animation is hilarious. That is so funny. Uh, it's great. What did back air trade with up smash with the block? Ah, uh, that's a phenomenal question. Uh, so basically. Uh, normally, regular grounded hip. Oh my god, oh, not, again. not again. That's a death. That's a stop. He's dead. <laughs> you know, he's dead. At 0%. Yeah. Holy joke, you should be into half smash. You got it. You got the funny stuff off thing. <laughs> Man. Anyways. Uh, the, the thing is that up smash is actually uh, coded as a projectile, meaning you can interact with it um, as you would from the air. You can hit with it. You can clank with it. Um, so as Cookie was falling, uh, he just simply extended his hitbox, he landed, uh, and then while A-Fly was just like still stuck in the entirety of the animation of that move, uh, he still just had plenty of time to get the kill. So, seeing that, the extended hitbox and then still having enough time to still get a kill, like yeah, that's that's silly. You know, that, that move is slow. It's a, it's a commitment. You gotta be confident when you go for it. And they gotta kill at Zuga. Imagine getting shield broken at 0%. How does that feel? How does that make you feel? You can't see it, but my jaw dropped after that shield break. And, and the second you said he was dead, I, I went, really? I mean, at zero? Uh, like, in my head? But I, I, that is a, a crazy amount of, of damage and knockback that that move can do. Uh, and I think... I don't even know if he connected the F smash out of it. That that uh, the hit stun from that neutral B does allow you the time to F smash, but I don't even think he got that out of it. Yeah, there, there's nothing that you can do. You just you just suffer. You just suffer in that position. Uh, this pick worked well. This was an excellent choice. You know, 
However, sometimes you just get shield poke and all of you sucks. Was that all of the sucks? Because that's just two of them. No, that was, was, that was just two of them. Just two of them. But still, if, you, if you're getting called out like that, that means you gotta be playing back a little bit more and uh, you can't be committing to shield that mid range as much because otherwise you're just gonna blow up for it. And now we see the switch back to Game & Watch. When you switch after winning game one and then you lose, oh man, have you got something to prove game three. You have to. Otherwise you're gonna be taking a huge L. I mean, remember, if Cookie wins this set, then Canisius will not have uh, won a single set in, in today's matchup. So, AFI just trying to get something on the board for Canisius. Uh, and another random uh, number fact for you. You know how many points DePaul has allowed in the spring? They've given up 15 since the start of spring. 15. 15. 15. We've seen schools go 18 through 15 in one set before. It's been five weeks of, of spring season. They're averaging three points against. That is less than you can earn in an entire set. That is how well DePaul has been playing. And I mean, they kind of showed it today. Uh, and again, A-Fly just keeps on going through those same exact kills, but oh, that's a meaty bucket, my friend. Ooh, that, 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 that bucket is gonna be brimming. And that's gonna be the kill. Uh, Cookie gonna be unfortunately misspacing that up B, not gonna be getting uh, to the correct side, not able to cross up or position himself safely at all. This is a huge lead for A-Fly right now. You know, only 62%, make that 71. He'll be off stage here, and Cookie just kinda waiting for a defensive option. Good parry on the down smash. But again, A-Fly just trying to find his way out of this corner, survives that one. That one was very close. Great he'll, he'll catch be on by landing. That yeah, those empty hops were able to support A-Fly's positioning a little bit more, and he was able to find that juggle. Excellent up, be getting back onto the stage. A-Fly was not ready for it, just eating all those hits. Back to just about even, and uh, feel like Cookie's spacing uh, especially as the set has gone on, has just gotten better and better. And now you can kind of tell A-Fly struggling to find a way in. Ooh, right, now, right there, Cookie was just trying to catch landing with that F-Smash. A-Fly finding the barely F-Smash and killing from the opposite side of the stage. And since no move has the right to be killing that early. Uh, but of course, Sephiroth is a light boy. He will be, you know, meeting his maker sooner than others. But still, that was uh, tragic. Ooh, and now A-Fly has to be very careful at 100%. Again, one of those strong hits. I want to see that bucket. There it is, baby. Kill. Yep, that's a strong bucket. And oh my goodness, 74 out of that bucket. I mean, he had a little bit of percent on him regardless, but that bucket yeah. coming in clutch. That's a strong bucket. You got to be so careful about stuff about, about, you know, like the way that you're using projectiles. You have to force them to shield. If you get that side B off on them, you have to stay up in their face. Make sure they have no time to pull out bucket because look at that. Uh, Game Watch is able just to fill it up, was able to get a kill at 30% at the edge of the stage. That is not okay. That is... That's Game & Watch. 